Okay, in this video we're going to look at the notion of a Laplace transform. So this is an important tool for solving differential equations, although we won't use it to solve differential equations in this video. We're just going to look at a few simple examples. So here's the definition. So we want to let this function little f be defined on the interval 0 to infinity. So for all um, values of the input, input bigger than or equal to 0, the Laplace transform of little f, which we call capital F, is defined by the following formula. So we have capital F of s, so s is the variable for the Laplace transform in general, sometimes p, but we'll be using s, is the integral from 0 to infinity of this exponential function e to the minus s multiplied by f of t, which is our original function. Now we're integrating over t, and then, so that's the definition. The notation that we uh, use quite often is we'll call capital F, we'll call, call it the script L um, evaluated on little f because this Laplace transformation is actually a linear transformation on the vector space of functions. Okay, good. So let's look at some really simple examples. So probably the simplest example would be f of, x, f of t is the constant function 1, and that's the one that we'll start with. So if f of t is the constant function 1, then that means L of f, or capital F if you will, is defined as follows. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st dt. Well really times 1 dt, but obviously that's the same. Okay, good. Now we can um, recall the definition of the improper integral. For, so for these first couple examples, we'll be really careful with this, but later we'll be a little bit more hand wavy. So this is equal to the limit as capital T goes to infinity of the integral from zero to capital T of e to the minus st dt. Okay, great. Now the next thing we're going to do is take the antiderivative there. So um, you can use a little baby u substitution if you want to, but just remember that if you were to take the derivative of that, a negative s would come down as a multiplier because of the chain rule. So the antiderivative uh, negative 1 over s will come out, again because we're reversing the chain rule. So this will be negative 1 over s, and then we have... <coughs> um, Sorry, I forgot my limit. So we have the limit as capital T goes to infinity of negative 1 over s e to the minus st. And now we're going to evaluate that from 0 to capital T. Now I'll use a trick of simplification. I can change the bounds of integration by changing the overall sign. So that's going to give me the limit as capital T goes to infinity of 1 over s e to the minus st from t to zero. So obviously that's the same, but it leaves less hanging minus signs, and those are like easy ways to make little mistakes. So here we have, this is the limit as capital T goes to infinity of one over s minus one over s e to the minus s t. Okay, good. Um, but now this bit is going to go to zero, and so we get one over s. So we have the Laplace transformation of this constant function one is one over s. Okay, good. I'll clean up the board, and then we'll maybe look at the next simplest example of a Laplace transformation. Okay, the next example we want to look at is the Laplace transformation of the function f of t equals t. So this is maybe the next simplest example after the one that we just looked at, which was f of t equals 1. So let's throw it right into the definition of the Laplace transformation. And notice we have L of, now we can just write t here, um, because that is f of t. And so that's going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of t times e to the minus st dt. Okay, great. And then again, we're going to be really careful with our improper integral for these first couple of examples. So this is equal to the limit as capital T goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to capital T of t e to the minus st dt. 
Great. But now we have um, a polynomial function, a very simple polynomial function times an exponential function. So that tells us uh, two things really. One, that we can use integration by parts. And second is that maybe tabular integration is the type of integration by parts which is simplest here and that's what we'll do. So for tabular integration what we need to do is set up a table we have the polynomials on the left-hand side, and we have the exponential part um, down the right-hand side. We're going to take derivatives down the left-hand side of the table, and we're going to take antiderivatives or improper integrals, not improper integrals, um, antiderivatives down the right-hand side of the table. So let's do that. So the derivative of t is 1, the derivative of 1 is 0, and then we can stop. The antiderivative of e to the minus st is minus 1 over s e to the minus st. Good. And then next, the antiderivative of that is 1 over s squared e to the minus st. So an extra negative 1 over s comes out, and that obviously the negative signs cancel, and we get a 1 over s squared. Okay, next we combine on the diagonals as follows and then we alternate the signs positive and negative. So let's see this one already has a negative attached to it so that's an overall negative. This one has a positive attached to it so that's also an overall negative. So that's going to give us the following. We have the limit as t goes to infinity of so that's going to be negative t over s e to the minus st um, minus 1 over s squared e to the minus st. Okay, great. And then that's going to be evaluated from 0 to t. Okay, good. Now we can do the same thing, change the bounds of evaluation and switch the sign. So that's going to give us the limit as capital T goes to infinity of um, t over s um, plus 1 over s squared um, and then we have e to the minus st we could do it all like that and now we're going to evaluate this whole thing from t to 0 good so now notice evaluating it at 0 is going to give us 1 over s squared and then evaluating it at t will give us the following. So we'll have plus the limit as t goes to infinity of, so we'll have capital T over s plus 1 over s squared e to the minus s times capital T. Good. And then that limit is equal to zero. Again, you can use L'Hopital's rule if you want to because it looks at the moment like infinity over infinity if you send that exponential downstairs. But again, we're doing Laplace transformations and differential equations, which means calculus two is behind you and uh, you should be really familiar with that type of limit at this point. So uh, we end up in the end with one over S squared. That's the Laplace transformation of